Hello everybody and welcome to my Plan Attack YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a terrible plan and make it much better. Now this is a 600 square foot or 56 square meter newly built studio apartment in Boston. We're going to take a few minutes and we're going to walk through the plan and I'm going to point out all of the design problems with this layout and then we're going to come up with some strategies and ideas on how to fix it. And at the very end of the episode you're going to get to vote between two different options in terms of which one you think is the better layout for this apartment. So let's start out by walking through the plan. I always like to start at the front door. You come in the front entry and right away we have a door swing collision between the closet door and the entry door which is never a good thing. I also think the front coat closet is very weird because it's got a very tiny door and then a lot of the storage is kind of in this back area which is not accessible. So it's not a very good layout for this front coat closet. I also don't like the fact that the bathroom access is immediately as soon as you come in the front door. So you walk in the front door and you turn right and you're immediately in the bathroom. And I never like that in small apartments when the bathroom access is right at the entry. I also think that the washer dryer is a bit odd because the washer dryer is centered on the door, which makes sense. But then there's this odd bit of space below the washer dryer that is completely inaccessible. And I don't know why they wouldn't just put a larger bifold door or sliding doors so that you could access the whole closet. I find that very strange. And now we're getting to what I think is the biggest problem in the whole unit and that has to do with the bedroom. And I should maybe put bedroom in quotations because technically it's not really a bedroom. They have to call this a studio apartment. This room where the bed will go has no egress window and because there's no window they can't technically call it a bedroom. So. I call this a cheater bedroom. It's a way that they kind of make a bedroom in a studio apartment that doesn't have a window. And the other thing they're not allowed to do is they're not allowed to enclose this room. So as you'll notice, there's no door. They've just completely removed the door. So not only is there no window, but there's also no privacy to the space because there is no door. I also think this room is kind of oversized for the size of the apartment. And I don't understand the use of this 45 degree angle. And then they've angled it a little bit again. So it's kind of a curve, which I think is very odd. And the other thing that's a huge problem is the location of the walk-in closet. It's basically outside the bedroom near the kitchen. You have to walk from the bedroom down the hall to get in the closet. And then you're gonna have to walk from the closet to get into the bathroom. So your whole morning routine is a lot of extra steps because I don't think these pieces are in the right location. I'm also not a fan of where they've got the study desk. It's kind of in a weird dark corner. And as we go into the living, dining, kitchen space, I mean, I think this is workable. I don't think there's really much wrong with the kitchen other than the fact that I don't know why they didn't just swing the pantry door against the wall. The fact that it swings the other way and blocks the alley of the kitchen really hurts my soul. So I don't know why someone would do that. So we do have our work cut out for us. We do have to take this plan apart and put it back together and try to make it much better. So I'm going to clear everything out and have a look. And when we look at it with everything cleared out, it actually looks pretty good. It looks like we've actually got a lot of opportunity. Now we're really limited on the window and that is the reason why we have to figure out another strategy for the bedroom other than what they've come up with. So I like to use these blocks. I call them puzzler pieces. If you've taken my online course, you know this is the way that I kind of like to work out concept designs and organization. I've got a bedroom block and then I've got a bathroom block and I'm just going to move it around the board and I'm just going to see what I can come up with. Now Right away I thought, is there any way we could get the bedroom up against the wall at the front? Now that's kind of interesting if we had the bedroom up here. The problem is, is now we've got a huge unit and a lot of space back here that's not going to have any access to the light. And I think that is actually a huge problem because of the depth of the unit. So I unfortunately, even though I'd love to put the bedroom up by the light, I don't think it's going to work. I think the bedroom is more or less going to have to go where it was. I also don't think that we can move it across the other side because when you come in then you're going to have to have some sort of a hallway around it and that just feels awkward. I'd rather just keep the circulation really up and down. Now the bathroom as we know has to be adjacent to the bedroom so I do think it is probably in the best location. However I'd like to change and work on the entry of the bathroom and I would really like to try to get the closet in the space between the bedroom and the bathroom. So I'm just going to duplicate this block because let's just imagine that the closet is the same size as the bathroom and maybe we walk through the closet 
to get into the bathroom and there's some sort of nicer way of doing that and then the bedroom can be down here this is kind of getting interesting I think that we should try to do maybe a nicer principal bedroom and then a nicer closet and a nicer bathroom and maybe this makes the whole unit a little bit more luxurious if that's possible at all so I'm gonna suggest this is a kind of a working strategy of moving forward and I'm already did some of the work with the walls and you can see kind of what I've done here I have actually created the sort of block piece and I've got the bedroom at the top and you walk into it and then you turn and you walk through the closet and into the bathroom and what I've done if you notice this I have put a sliding glass wall that basically provides daylighting and views from the bedroom space and I'm not allowed to call it a bedroom it is a studio from the where the sleeping area I guess that's the technical term so that you do have some access to daylight and views and there is privacy so you can close this off you can close the door I imagine that the bottom part of this glass wall would be frosted and maybe the top third closer to the ceiling would be clear to allow some daylighting and views so I'm just going to fill in some of the extra pieces and we're going to have a look at this because I've already done a little bit of work in advance I thought that if the closet was millwork blocks so they have nice doors on the cabinets that'll keep everything really neat and then over here you could put a bench or a mirror I've got two sliding doors you walk through this into the bathroom now of course we cannot have a bathroom that is accessible only through the bedroom that's a big no-no so I have added a guest bathroom a kind of powder room off to the side on the same side as the closets and the laundry now I've just adjusted everything on the side a little bit I fixed that nasty door swing I moved the front door over I put the hot water tank in the closet that was inaccessible before I made the laundry closet operable with sliding doors so you can access the whole thing the front coat closet has a double door so it's accessible and then I tucked the powder room bathroom up at the top and I made sure that with the door swing you're not looking at the toilet when you come in and you're not looking at the toilet from the living room and that's why I've laid it out in this way now interesting I have the kitchen blocks so where would we put the kitchen I mean we could put the kitchen where it was originally or maybe we could put it on the opposite side let's just see if that actually makes any sense to put it on the opposite side I'm going to move the kitchen over and it's interesting because it does fit on both sides we could maybe imagine that it's there and then I have my kitchen island and I can maybe move this over and I'll just flip the kitchen island a little bit so it'll be something like that interesting that does work I think that that's actually an interesting kind of setup I am going to move this is the fridge I'm just going to move this out of the way for a sec we'll place it in a minute and I'm just going to play with some furniture ideas I'm just going to see if I can make the furniture grouping work because we've got a dining table that we would place maybe up in the top corner and then maybe I have the living room furniture which maybe should go oh that doesn't work because you would be block walking into it down the hall maybe I have to flip where the dining table goes and the living room furniture maybe the living room furniture goes up at the top something like that actually I don't like the way that that looks I think it might be better if it kind of opens out something like that well hmm I'm not sure about this I don't really like where the living room is kind of facing and I don't really like the dining table kind of in that corner it feels like the furniture is sort of an obstruction so I'm going to move this out I'm going to put it back on the side and I'm going to go back one page and I'm just going to think about the kitchen I think the kitchen may have to stay on the side that it was originally and the reason is I actually really do like in this plan the idea of having the kind of millwork block be a sort of long block of storage that includes the kitchen all down one side it feels to me like the plan is really well organized that way so I'm going to move the kitchen um, main counter space I'm just going to flip it around and I'm actually going to flip it upside down too and I'm going to just stick it in place here and just see what I come up with I think this actually works pretty good so what's interesting about this is I have a pantry I have the dishwasher and the sink and I have counter space and then I have the stove and the fridge is at the top so I think that works really really good and I'm gonna place the island and I want to make sure I get it four feet away because four feet which is 1.22 meters is the actual amount of space that you should have if possible between the back counter and the kitchen island so I'm just going to measure this again and make sure I've got four feet 
got a little bit more, I can actually just scooch this back a little bit, about six inches because I've got a little bit more. And I also really like to have the island kind of not block the fridge because as we know, the fridges have door swings. So I always, wherever possible, try to align the end of the island with the start of the fridge so that you can walk around the island and access the, uh, the fridge no problem. So I kind of like this layout, it's interesting. It's very similar to what it was before, but maybe slightly more refined in what I would say. So let's put the furniture back. I mean, obviously the bed is gonna go in the sleeping area. I've got a TV. I put some bookshelves in this hall because it's extra wide. So I think that works really, really good. Now in terms of the furniture layout, I think that the table, I've got this round table, goes really well in this upper corner. And then I'm going to just move the sofas down and I'm just going to, I guess I could put them that way and I could put the TV on the wall here. I'm just going to move the bar stools in and just place them against the eating bar. So that's interesting because I guess I could put the TV there. There's no blockage in terms of the circulation from the sliding door. And this all seems to work really, really well. But I do have an alternate idea, which I was thinking about, and I'm going to show you guys and see what you think. What if we flipped the furniture the other way, just rotated it so it faced inwards? And some people like the idea of being able to have a bit of a more social space in terms of like looking at the kitchen, sitting on the sofa. And what if I made the island with a wing wall that was maybe went up about 60 inches, maybe five feet, so not up to the ceiling, and I use that to mount the TV. And then that way, when you're sitting, in the living room you can talk to people in the kitchen you can sort of see over top of that wall but you can also look at the tv so this is no higher than say 48 40 let's say 48 to 60 inches somewhere in there and on the back side of the island you've got this nice counter you can put some plugs you could put your coffee maker it actually might work really really well and the thing that's nice about this is i also have room for another chair i could pull in another chair up on the side and have a casual seating area so what we've created now is actually a really really nice studio apartment i think it's actually quite beautiful i like the modesty of the size of the sleeping area i like the walk through closet remember these are wardrobes so they're going to be closed so this is going to be very very neat and we've got a nice bathroom and for guests we have a separate bathroom so this is one option that I think would work really, really well to make this terrible plan much better. I'm gonna call this option A. And I also want you to look at option B. This is an alternate layout idea and it's got a couple differences in it. I want you to study both of them and leave a comment in terms of which one you prefer, option A or option B. And if you're interested in learning how I design floor plans and following my method, I encourage you to take my course. It's called The Puzzler. It's an online course and the link is available to the teaching platform platform in the masthead of my YouTube channel.